Hello, welcome to another edition of NFL Weekly. I'm Jax Rogan. I'm Evan Whitney. And today we'll be going over uh, week 10 of the NFL season. You know the usual here. We're already in week 10 of the NFL season. It's kind of crazy to me. But anyway, let's move on to the first section, game recaps. We got the Thursday night game, the Colts beating the Titans 34-17. Rivers finally has a good game. Uh, he threw for 300 yards. Uh, Najeem Hines and Jonathan Taylor led the running game for the Colts. And uh, their good defense played really well. And they got them the dub. Uh, our next game, we got the Browns and Texans. This was a pretty low-scoring game. Browns winning 10-7. to uh, The Texans' offense never could really get into the end zone. They struggled. The Browns pretty much had this uh, or had this whole game, and they looked good. And they got a big and much-needed win. Moving on to the Lions versus the football team, the Washington football team. They win 30-27. DeAndre Swift had a really good game running and catching the football. Uh, even though they blew like a 24-3 lead to get the game close in the fourth quarter, uh, Matt Prater hit a 59-yarder to win the game, which was clutch. He had a really good day kicking the football. And, I mean, this Lions team, I know they've blown some games, but they're still a talented team, as, they, as you can see. So then we got the Buccaneers beating the Panthers 46-23. Tom Brady has a huge game. He's got all kinds of weapons on the outside. I mean, this Buccaneers team is a team to be scared of down the road. It's got so many weapons on offense, and their defense looked good against a pretty good Panthers offense. Now moving on to I think is going to win the NFC East, the Giants beating the Eagles 27-17. No turnovers for Danny Dimes. Uh, that's something he struggled with his whole two-year career so far coming out of uh, Duke. I think that uh, the Giants are really underrated. I think Blake Martinez is the most slept-on uh, linebacker in the NFL. Um, I think Wayne Gallman's starting to come into his own. And uh, I think that the Eagles are falling apart with Wednesday's quarterback. And I don't know. I think it's going to be a really close race. But the Giants winning made it closer. So then we got the Packers beating the Jags 24-20. This game, a sloppy game by the Packers. I mean, no one expected this game to be this close. The Eagles, or sorry, not the Eagles. Wow. Uh, the Jags, the Jags really were in this game the whole game. I mean, I don't, I don't understand what happened to the Packers here. Uh, but they pull out, and Aaron Rodgers, he still has a good game, and Devontae Adams as well. Moving on to the next game, the Cardinals beating the Bills 32-30. The only thing you can really say is DeAndre Hopkins' catch. I mean, that was just spectacular by uh, Evans, one of his favorite QBs, Kyler Murray, throwing a dime. MVP. <laughs> uh, Evans on one right now. But uh, I think that uh, this is a really uh, nice, nice win for the Cardinals, beating a really solid Bills team. I mean, this Bills team is no slouch. They're seven and three now, but I mean, it did take some heroics for the Cardinals to win. But I really liked how the Cardinals bounced back in the second half. So then we got the uh, Dolphins over the Chargers. Tua impresses once again. Tua looks great out there, beating in a rookie duel between Herbert and Tua. Uh, Herbert doesn't play bad, but they can't quite beat the Dolphins. And the Dolphins are looking really good right now with this offense and great defense. Now moving on to the next game, we got the Raiders beating the Broncos 37-12. Uh, Drew Locke's really kicking himself here, throwing four interceptions in the game. I mean, that's just unexcusable against a, a good Raiders offense with Henry Ruggs, Darren Waller, Nelson Aguilar, Josh Jacobs. I mean, there's just too many weapons on this team to turn the ball over that many times. I think Derek Carr is having a really bounce-back season. Uh, I think he's a possible pro bowler this year, the way he's played. I mean, you got to give the man credit. I know people don't like him, but, I mean, John Gruden and uh, John Mayock have done a really good job rebuilding this Raiders team. So uh, then we got the Rams beating the Seahawks 23-16. The Seahawks fall again. Wilson's really putting his MVP season in jeopardy, in my opinion, after it seemed like through, like, the first seven weeks that Wilson was going to be the MVP lock, but... Now my boy Kyler Murray, I think I think he's got a good shot in there now. He's having a heck of a year. Kyler Murray looking good. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's happening to Russell Wilson, but a big win for the Rams and a big loss for the Seahawks. Now moving on to the next game, we got the Steelers beating on Evans Bengals 10, 36-10. Uh, big Ben had a really good game. Uh, I really liked how he played. He Stand in the pocket well. He has so many weapons now with Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, Juju, Eric Ebron. I mean, I was really not really high on this uh, 
Steelers team coming into the season. But, I mean, now after looking at them, they're looking really good. Uh, the Bengals really stinked this game. They blew a lot of chances. Alex Erickson, Erickson fumbled. Uh, T. Higgins fumbled. And Joe Burrow missed some reads. But overall, I think this is not on the Bengals losing. I think the Steelers won this game. And Steelers, man, they're just impressive. Yep, so then we got the Saints beating the 49ers 27-13. Uh, the Saints play pretty well, not very well at the beginning, but they pulled out in the end. Uh, big thing here, Breeze with an injury. Jameis Winston finishing the game for them, so we'll see what happens there, but the Saints get another win. Now moving on to the final game, the Sunday night game. The Patriots beat the Ravens 23-17 as a shocker almost, as the Patriots improved to 3-5 and five, as the Ravens dropped to 6-3. and three. Uh, as Evan says in quote, uh, Lamar is booty in the in our notes because I, I think he has a point here, though. He did not play good. He threw two picks, um, and it's a big win for the Pats. I think Damian Harris is really proving himself, rushing for over 100 yards again. And Evan's good old friend Rex Burkhead catches two touchdowns for the, the Patriots, and I think that this is a really good step forward for Bill Belichick. All right, so now we're going to move on to our second section, our fantasy performances, our breakout uh, sleepers and busts. Starting off with the breakout, I'm going to take DeAndre Swift first here, scoring 26 points. Uh, he had a big game in the running game and the passing game. He looks very explosive, and he, he, he looks really fast with the ball. This guy looks like he, he's going to be a really good player from the, down, the, down the road here, and I really like the way this guy looked. Now moving on to the Oakland Raiders running back, Josh Jacobs, who scored 29, 29.6 points. Um, he didn't even play in the fourth quarter, and he scored that many. I think that was a big bounce back week for him. Uh, he has been losing carries to uh, – who's the backup running back for Oakland? Devontae Booker. Devontae Booker, yes. Uh, he's been playing really good for the Oakland, but it's nice to see Josh Jacobs be who he was his rookie year. Um, I think that he makes this Raiders team go. It sets up Derek Carr to hit his wide receivers, as I said earlier, and I think you can keep seeing these breakout performances from Josh Jacobs after a slow start. So then we got Kyler Murray. Obviously, this guy is one of the best fantasy quarterbacks in the league. No bias. Just just because of his legs, this makes him so much more of a threat with the fantasy points. Uh, scoring 30 points, Kyler Murray, and obviously... The huge touchdown at the end of the game to DeAndre Hopkins helped his cause, too. Uh, this guy, I mean, he, if you don't have this guy starting in your fantasy team, you, you, you're crazy because this guy puts up huge numbers every week, and I think he's the best fantasy quarterback in the league. Moving on to the next player, we got T. Higgins of the Bengals. I'm so happy I picked him up in fantasy uh, early in the season, but uh, he scored 22.5 points. Sorry for that. Uh, even though he, uh, the Bengals did not have a good game, I think he was a little bright spot for them. Uh, he had over 100 yards receiving, a touchdown, and uh, I think that if he can really keep getting open, he, I think he's Joe Burrow's favorite target to throw to. He and Joe Burrow can have a special relationship. So now onto our sleepers. I'm going to start off with the Colts running back, Naeem Hines, scoring 28.5 points. This guy reminds me a little bit of DeAndre Swift. I mean, they're both just explosive. And they can catch it and run it. They can do it all. And they're both looking really good to me. Moving on to the next sleeper, Wayne Gallman from the Giants. Uh, I said earlier I really like Wayne Gallman. I liked him out of Clemson. Uh, I think he's a good player for them. If he can get his touches, he sets up Daniel Jones. And uh, I think that he really can keep uh, being a sleeper. I mean, not really many people know about him. He's a young player. But I think that he can really get some positive yards and a lot of fantasy points. So then we got Marvin Jones from the Lions scoring 23.6 points. Uh, this guy is one of the best receivers on this Lions team. And uh, he's he's been playing well the last couple of weeks, and this guy's a must pick up if you haven't yet. Now moving on to Evan's former friend on the Bengals, we have Rex Burkhead, the man who would catch everything out of the backfield for the Bengals. Uh like I said, he had 22.6 points. He had two receiving touchdowns. It's really boosted his fantasy value. And I think that uh, he can uh, really keep this up with splitting carries and catches with Damian Harris. Now moving on to the bust section. 
Yeah, so our first bus player, the tight end from the Lions, uh, Hawkinson, not a great game for him, scoring 3.3 points. Um, the Lions get the win, but Hawkinson just held the three points. Uh, not a not a great performance for him, but I, I don't see this continuing. I think he's been a good fantasy tight end this year, and I think he'll bounce back. Moving on to the Tennessee Titans' lead wide receiver, A.J. Brown only scoring 3.1 points. I think this is kind of disappointing because he's been – really good of late for the Titans and I think that a lot of people have been starting him in four, eight, twelve first in leagues and uh, I think he can bounce back though. I mean he's proven that he's one of the top uh, wide receivers in football uh, and I think that he can bounce back hopefully next week. So then we got uh, Noah Fant from the Denver Broncos. It's tough to score a lot of points when you have your quarterback that's throwing four picks. So this one doesn't really surprise me here. I don't know. I, th I don't know about the uh, situation for the Broncos, if they'll draft a quarterback next year or not. But no offense, I don't know about this guy for your team. Uh, I, I like Hawkinson more, but Fant, he's just very inconsistent. And I don't know. I don't, I don't feel too well about him. Now we got Mike Davis, the Carolina Panthers running back, only scoring 8.4 points. I know you may say that's a lot compared to everyone else, but without Christian McCaffrey, Mike Davis should have a lot of carries. And I, even though Tampa Bay is a good defense, I mean, there's countless times he could have scored. And I think that this is a disappointment for uh, Mike Davis owners because before he, uh, uh, he has last start, uh, when McCaffrey came back, he was really doing well. And uh, I think that if uh, him, he, if he can, I think he can bounce back. Uh, but hopefully uh, the Panthers can get more push and Teddy Bridgewater can get uh, more running holes for him by throwing the pass. Now we're moving on to section three of uh, this podcast here. We're going over the top ten. And we're starting off with my top ten, the better top ten than Evans. Starting with number one, uh, we got the Steelers. Uh, I think this is unanimous. I mean, they're the only undefeated team in football. They look dominant this weekend over uh, the Bengals, who are not a bad team at all. And uh, I think that their defense and offense are really clicking. Getting Big Ben back from COVID-19 list is really huge, and I think that uh, they can really make it a good run in this, to the Super Bowl. Moving on to my number two, I, I still got the Chiefs. I mean, they're 8-1. and one. You can't there's no sleeping on him. Patrick Mahomes has been otherworldly this year. I think he's kind of been slept on after his amazing year last year. Uh, but I think that if this de if they want to make it far and make the Super Bowl like they did last year, they need their defense to step up. Players like Chris Jones, Tyron Matthew, they really need them to step up. But I have really no worries with this Chiefs offense. Patrick Mahomes is just that good. I already think he's a top five quarterback of all time. Moving on to my number, moving on to my number three, uh, I got the Green Bay Packers. I mean, I think they've just been impressive this year. Aaron Jones and Aaron Rodgers, the Aaron duo, have been really good throwing and running the football. And I think Devonte Adams has uh, has said his name. He is the best receiver in football, uh, like it or not. I mean, he's he's like leading the receivers in touchdowns after only playing seven games, which is ridiculous. And I think. Having that defense, which is slowly getting better. I mean, Jair Alexander's a lockdown corner. We we can all respect that. Uh, I think having Zadarius Smith is really good. But um, I just think that the Packers, if just like the Chiefs, if they want to win, go far, go to the Super Bowl, they need their defense to step up because we all know their offense is going to score. Moving on to my number four, I got the Saints. I mean, I still have them here even though Drew Brees hurt I mean I think Jameis Winston could fill in maybe we'll see I think Jameis Winston's still not a bad quarterback he just can't throw interceptions like he did last year but I really like the Saints team without Michael Thomas being Michael Thomas this year I think it's really impressive it shows how good uh the coach has been for uh the Saints uh what's his name Evan Sean Payton Sean Payton yeah uh Sean Payton's done a really nice coaching job and I think that they're really talented. Moving to number five, I got the Cardinals. I mean, you got to give them credit. Kyler made the throw, the throw of his life, maybe even his lifetime, going on the run, throwing it 50 yards to D Hop, who I think is the number two receiver in the league right now. I mean, you just got to give them credit. The Cardinals, they beat the Bills, so that's why I have them at number five. Moving on to my number six, like I just said, I got the Bills. I mean, the Bills are still a really talented football team, and not for a lucky throw and a lucky catch. Uh, I think they win this game and move to 8-2. And, and 
I think that this showed that Josh Allen can really play. I mean, he had a really good game. He ran the ball. He threw the ball. Cole Beasley's been underrated this year. Uh, Dawson Knox has been really good. Stephon Diggs is leading the, the like top of the league in receiving yards. And we all know about this Bills defense. That's just straight up nasty. So that's why I have at six. And I have a team that Evan hates right now, the Baltimore Ravens at seven. I know they lost to a good, a not very good Patriots team, but you still got to give them credit. Greg Roman's still a very good offensive mind. And their defensive front now with uh, Niguage, um Calais Campbell. You got Patrick Queen at linebacker. I mean, there's just, just too much talent on this defense, not not to them to do well, and too much of a good old line. A good and good receivers not to be a very good team in the AFC. So I wouldn't write out the Ravens just yet. <laughs> Moving on to my number eight, I got the the LA Rams. I mean, I think that this team Evan also sleeps on. I think they're really good. Uh, Jared Goff, I know he's taken a few steps back this year, but I still think he's a good running uh, quarterback. Daryl Henderson and Cam Akers have been really good running the football for them. Um, and having those two playmakers on defense and Joe and Ramsey and Aaron Donald really makes them scary in the playoffs because both of them can take over a game. Joe and Ramsey can lock down one side of the field and Aaron Donald can force doubles to let the other d linemen for the Rams do good. And I think they're going a little under the radar, so that's why I have them at eight. And number nine, I got the Dolphins. I mean, you got to give them credit. Brian Flores is one of the best offensive minds in, or best defensive minds in football right now. He's really making that defense do great with uh, Kyle Van Noy and Byron Jones. They're two big signings. And their offense, I mean, although it doesn't look pretty, they're scoring. They're playing well. Two is not making mistakes. And I think he's growing each week, and I think that's really good for them. And now moving on to my number 10. I know I should probably have them higher, but I got the Oakland Raiders. I mean, Derek Carr, John Gruden, they've just mixed mixed together like peanut butter and jelly. I mean, uh, they've, they're they really, really working well. And I think that having Josh Jacobs and Devontae Booker at running back really solidifies them. And uh, having Jonathan Abram at safety for them is like their hard hitter, their leader, their defense. And I don't know. I just really like the way the Oakland Raiders are doing right now. And that's my top 10. All right, so now we're going to move on to my personal top 10. Uh, starting at number one for me, I got the Pittsburgh Steelers. I agree here with Jax. Uh, this team has looked the best this year, obviously, 9-0. Uh, Big Ben is having a good season. they got good weapons on uh, wide receivers. James Conner looks good. And this, obviously, this defense has played lights out this year. So coming at number two, I got the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, like yeah, like Jack said, he's having under, he's having an uh, underrated year in my opinion. Uh, he's just ha- playing lights out, not even being talked about like some other people, like Russell Wilson. Uh, this guy's playing outstanding, and he's got all the weapons to do it for this team. Uh, this defense is the only thing I worry about, but I think they'll figure it out, and I think this Chiefs team will end up right back in the Super Bowl. Uh, coming at number three, I got the New Orleans Saints. Uh, with Drew Brees going out, I don't know what will happen there. And I don't even know if he'll be back for next week. He might. Uh, but this Saints team has been hot lately, and I don't see it ending with Michael Thomas coming back and Alvin Kamara playing some of the best football of his life. Coming at number four, I got the Green Bay Packers. The Aaron Rodgers, after this week, I didn't, I moved him down one spot just because of a close game against the Jags. They didn't look great. But I think they'll fix that and come back next week playing better than ever. Uh, Matt LaFleur knows what he's doing, and he'll lead this team to a playoff spot and then possibly much more than that. Coming at number five, I agree here with Shaxx. I got the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Tyler Murray has just been outstanding this year. Uh, with their big play to DeAndre Hopkins, I don't know if I would have them at five, which really a huge play for Hopkins, uh, putting them at number one in the division now, a three-way tie with the Seahawks and the Rams. Uh, they just look great to me. I mean, the, the Cardinals' offense and defense is looking outstanding, and I really like this team. Coming to number six, I got the Bucks After a huge win against the Panthers, went in 46-23. Tom Brady looked amazing uh, with their weapons on uh, offense with Antonio Brown, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin's healthy now, playing good. Uh, they're really looking good on offense for the Bucks, and their defense has been pretty good this year too. Number seven, I got the Bills. Tough loss for the Bills. Really tough loss after a 
just chucked by Murray to Hopkins in the end zone. Uh, tough way to end it for the Bills, but they'll be right there the rest of this year, and it's going to be interesting with them and the Dolphins in the end. So, yeah, coming at number eight, I got the Dolphins. Uh, Tua looks really good. I'm really high on Tua. Uh, he's just, yeah, like Jack said, he's just been improving every week. Uh, this defense is looking outstanding. Really good uh, players on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, not a ton of weapons on offense, but two is figuring out a way to get it done. And this Dolphins team is looking good. Coming at number nine, I got the Colts after an impressive win over the Tennessee Titans on Thursday Night Football. Uh, they looked good. Phillip Rivers looked good. Uh, the Colts defense is really good this year. And uh, I really like this Colts team finding a way, they're finding a way into the playoffs and possibly more. And then coming at number 10, I got the uh, Oakland Raiders. Uh, one of my favorite coaches in the league is John Gruden. I really like this guy. He's figuring out a way to uh, develop their car, and he, he's really uh, having a good year based off Josh Jacobs' success. Play action, he's been looking good. Uh, Josh Jacobs having a really good year. This Raiders defense looks good, and Carr's got weapons like Darren Waller and Nelson Aguilar. Henry Ruggs, they're all playing pretty well, and I like the Traders team. So now on to our fourth section, and I'll be starting off uh, with my players of the week. Starting off with the NFC, I got to go with DeAndre Hopkins. This is a huge win for the Arizona Cardinals, huge win, and it was all because of him in the end, catching a ball with three defenders circled around him. He won him this week, and their momentum is going to carry him into a probably – more success down the road and this was just a huge way to end it for Hopkins and a huge play and then at the AFC I got to go with Josh Jacobs having 100 plus yards two touchdowns uh, this this Raiders team really depends on his success and he stepped up for him and got them a big win over the Broncos Josh Jacobs looks good running the ball hard and I really like Josh Jacobs now going on to my better uh, AFC NFC player of the week's I'm just kidding, Devin. Uh, moving on to my NFC player of the week, uh, I got Ronald Jones. I mean, 23 carries, 182 yards, and a touchdown. I mean, he really bounced back. I mean, the the Buccaneers only ran the ball nine t- or five times against the Saints as they got blown the doors off them on Sunday Night Football. And I think that if Ronald Jones can really keep running like this, I think he solidifies his starting spot over Leonard Fournette and this Buccaneers offense, and they can really just take off. And moving on to my uh, AFC Player of the Week, I got big Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, <laughs> I know Evan hates him, but uh, I really like how he played. He had 333 passing yards, four touchdowns, and a big win over the Bengals. I mean, you just got to give him credit where credit's due. He's had a pretty good bounce back season after not playing at all last year, really. And I think that if he can keep doing well, they'll be A-OK. And that's going to do it. For NFL Weekly, Week 10, we covered the NFL recap. Uh, But even though we didn't get uh, Monday Night Football, we can't this week because we film on Monday. But we'll probably cover it next week. And signing off, I'm Jack Sorgan. I'm Evan Whitney. And we'll see you next week.